ีกครึ่งทางนะฮะแล้วเรามีคําถามอะไรที่อยู่ในใจอยากถามว่าเอ๊ะเป็นไงทํางานออกแบบดีขนาดนี้ใช้ชีวิตลําบากหรือเปล่าอยู่ญี่ปุ่นไฮโซหรือเปล่าเนี่ยอะไรเงี้ยเราเดี๋ยวเราคุยกันได้ตอนหลังเลยนะครับผมว่าน่าน่าจะเรียนรู้ไปด้วยกันนะฮะขอให้ทุกคนกลับเข้ามาเลยแล้วกันนะครับจากด้านหลังนะครับโอเคครับงั้นเรามารู้จักนะครับท่านต่อไปกันเลยแล้วกันนะฮะมารู้จักคุณชินโกะต่อไปนะฮะเดี๋ยวคุณจัดพงจะมาเงียบนิดนึงแล้วกันนะครับเดี๋ยวคุณฉัดพงนะครับจะมาพูดคุยแล้วก็เล่าประวัติคร่าวๆนะครับของคุณจินโกะให้ฟังครับเดี๋ยวเราเริ่มกันเลยนะฮะโอเคโอเค our next speaker is Mr. Shingo Masuda uh, is an architect uh, born in Tokyo and uh, the same age as Takashi-san right 31 years old. Uh, he graduated from uh, Musashino Art University and now is also a lecturer or professor at Musashino Art University as well. He and his partner, Katsuhisa Otsubo, have a small pra uh, practice uh, and their offices create many small but very engaging, amazing projects that have won many, many awards, uh, both in Japan and internationally. And 2008 and in 2009, uh, they won the Kajima Institute Publishing Company SD uh, uh, Review Award. In 2009, uh, they won the Architectural Review AR Awards uh, commendation. 2011, uh, they won Japan Commercial Environmental Design Association JCD Design Award, uh, the Gold Award. And in 2011, uh, again, he won the Architectural Review AR Plus D Awards, was the runner-up. So without further delay, uh, Mr. Shingo, the stage is yours. Please give him a hand. Thank you, Mr. Chat, and I'm um, very honored to be invited uh, to Chulalongkorn University today. And uh, I'm actually not very good at talking in front of people, and uh, <laughs> in Japanese too. <laughs> and uh, but I will try. And uh, you know, Takashi's slides was like a, about 300 pages. Mine is about 100, so maybe I should do. The presentation three times maybe <laughs> to catch up. Oh no, just kidding. Um, so it'll be short. It'll be a short presentation. Presentation. So uh, I think you guys are stopping. So I'll be make it short. Okay. So I want to uh, first talk about a little more about my uh, work uh, before uh, I started working and uh, we're now. Uh, Tokyo based and has been practicing for about like five years right now after graduating the university uh, we were actually thinking of uh, maybe quitting architecture that time uh, because it was uh, too big too much information in uh, the uh, education uh, we had uh, so we were confused but uh, we had we found a chance to think uh, from a very small, pure uh, architecture uh, after graduation. So we continued, and uh, it's now. And today we would like to talk about uh, this script, The Richness. Uh, And the script of richness. Uh, well, I think uh, richness is very important to have in situations and uh, environments and uh, also architecture. The word richness is uh, used to explain something grand and massive, like the richness of nature. Or, But what does this uh, richness mean? Uh, we think it is about a range of the width and depth of 
uh, things going around. Uh, like nature is really complex. Uh, every element uh, and factors are not being there for someone or something. They're just playing their own role and being there. Uh, we also play a role and feel on our own. Uh, nature is beautiful, uh, but nature is sometimes terrifying. Uh, there are many things going on. Uh, maybe you can call that you are just misreading the nature uh, in a good way or bad way. Um, nothing is doing things to make you feel good in nature, but you just feel good in that. Uh, we are trying to script that kind of uh, relations and balance in somehow to our architectural practice every time. And this was actually the first project we did. Uh, the project was a request from a windmill company, and it was a build. It was to build a rest stop uh, that could look over the view uh, with the windmills. The site is on a hill in the wind farm, uh, surrounded by rich nature spotted with windmills near the Shimonoseki city. Uh, but when we first went to the site, we found a beautiful panoramic view of windmills and thought, uh, do we actually need to uh, build a rest stop, a rest stop here? You know? uh, the table on the uh, left picture uh, is doing fine. So I asked, and also asked the workers of the wind farm, uh, will people come here on a su really super windy day or rainy day and rest? And, but in that kind of day, they said that no one will come into the site to look because the place will close to public. So I guess they just wanted to put something here, uh, but they didn't know what to. Um, the site, uh, the flowers and glass flutter in the wind, uh, clouds drift away, and the windmills revolve by the wind. Uh, we therefore decided to plan a wind that's bringing this place together, rather than just building something only for nothing. We planned a little steel frame viewing platform right beside the little hill on the hill that naturally deforms by the wind load. Uh, just like the other elements getting influenced by the wind. And this tube uh, has a size of 2 meter by 2 meter and 7.5 meter in the, to the height. It is a very simple operation that's done here, uh, but we got very artificial curves uh, that different from the plants. Because this structure is bandled at the top, uh, the line of the curve becomes like an S curve, but only four posts uh, are inefficient to pass on the load to the uh, on, uh, pass on the load from the wind to the structure. So we uh, put a little more grids, like the figure shows, to catch load easier. And deformation happens so naturally in the nature; we even don't notice. So. Uh, it, you know, the deformation in nature is very usual, natural. So this structure had to be the same. Uh, we didn't want this sway to stand out in the scenery. So the deformation analysis ended up at maximum of one, uh, 45 millimeter to each side, a uh, total of 290 millimeters. The grid has a six millimeter diameter brace, which is movable at the edge by placing loose hole in each connection. So it's usually, s the, the braces are sliding. And, and uh, it functions only when unexpected strong wind blows to the structure and uh, they lock. The structure is sandwiched uh, with rubber sponge-like material to deform with the structure. Uh, it acts as a sail on a boat. Uh, it takes all the load to the steel frame. Uh, it also functions to absorb the small sound and the faint vibration during the deformation. The structure was so thin and narrow uh, it's actually like uh, three centimeters square at the bottom 
and uh, six millimeter at the top, the columns. Oh. Uh, it's just like a fishing rod. It gets narrower, uh, it gets thinner uh, as you go to the top. So we made it in the factory and brought it, brought the uh, entire structure by truck and put it there. Uh, we also planned a long leg chair in the structure, uh, which you can climb up and, of course, sit to see the view from a small opening. Uh, the deformation gets bigger the higher. So actually, you can feel the deformation more uh, when you climb up and sit on the chair. This is the uh, completed c completion. Uh, it's a close-up uh, of the tower and a photo of a plan. It has two entrances, so you can go through it. And this is the inside. It's just a tube. Uh, there's no ceiling. Uh, it's just a long tube that has one uh, chair inside. And when you look up, there's no ceiling, so you can't. You can see the clouds drifting or structure swaying. Maybe. It, you don't know which is moving. Uh, this was uh, approximately the maximum deformation. Uh, we opened the shutter to take this photo for about a second when the uh, typhoon striked. Uh, I think you can see the deformation. Uh, this, this plan is conceived for the place as a whole. And the structure also flows unnoticed like others, uh, but unexpectedly catches attention. So the structure deformation uh, as a design, which is quite unusual and, should, and shouldn't do usually, uh, is actually usual for this place now uh, as a new condition for this place. Uh, this is a plan for a small shed and a little workshop that you can do inside. And that's the one in the center. And the main apartment building in the left corner below was already there. So we are just planning the shed to put things in it and the place to do some little work. It has a folded steel plate structure with uh, 0 0.8 millimeter thick double wall to make inside the wall hollow. And the openings in each wall are shifted so that the stored stuff inside are not exposed to direct sunlight and rain. So the construction itself functions as a large uh, ventilation grill and gently circulates the air. Uh, while the uh, indirect light from the op uh, opening secures people to just barely look over the uh, stored things at the same time. And what we designed he here uh, is uh, some behind the shade. A loose transition uh, on each opening in the surface wall. Uh, this may seem like an architecture that have really familiar or classic composition element, uh, which uh, people won't feel the strangeness in the final design. Uh, but we think that this is uh, forming a new relation with a completely different channel or function, uh, not just using the classic composition. When you get inside the first, it, it's quite dark, but it gets lighter, the uh, longer you stay, the better you see inside. The sunlight that wanders in the hollow uh, wall gently watches over the settled belongings. Well, the important lies, uh, the importance, uh, just wait. Hmm. 
the important in the importance uh, lied in the making enough storage space, uh, stable room environment for things. Uh, the dominance uh, of the things being stored held an absolute importance uh, rather than space for people uh, when deciding the environment needed. So the plan of a situation where things quietly exist became the main theme uh, in this project. Well, I think the slides, one slide is just broken. So never mind. Uh, when we think about our theme, we try to take a uh, step back from the direct design to people. We're, if people create something directly, uh, it becomes like an equipment or like a tool. And it begins to dominate the architecture and places. Uh, it gets boring. But if, on the other hand, uh, architecture becomes too powerful, it begins to dominate us. Uh, that kind of balance, uh, someone being dominant, uh, we think it's starting to lose the richness of architecture. So we try to make the problem very simple so that we can design indirectly and feed back to the project with a new way of its efficiency and functionality to, and find the probable relation between people and architecture in another way. Uh, what ends up good for people can create an equal relation between architecture and people. No one uh, of them being dominant. Uh, like you feel richness in nature. This is a conversion of a wall in front of the house facing the street. Uh, this site is in a high dense residential area in Tokyo. Uh, the streets are so narrow, so the wall is giving massive pressure to the street, and the wall is facing north, so it's, it, it doesn't have any direct sunlight uh, because it's shaded by the house. And due to that, the wall has uh, deteriorated by dwelling humidity. Uh, the client request was to renovate this 10 meter wall and the space between the house was also requested to be, uh, to be able to use as in a small garden uh, since the client's wife wanted to do gardening if possible. We chose expanded metal for the main material. They are stretched out from the small piece uh, so it has less existence from perforated metal. Uh, since it's stretched, the detail of the material works as a louver, so it can reflect light from the other side. It, it sometimes looks like a lace curtain, sometimes a solid wall from a different angle. Uh, it has many faces. So we thought in order to keep this impression of the material till the last, it, uh, it's going to be quite difficult because the material is so weak. So we had to think about the structure on its own. Uh, we first folded the expanded metal big, like trailing along the site, like this. Then we folded more in the corner and the center to make the frameless expanded metal structure of 10 meter long span. I made various heights and angles as a whole that weakly relates and embraces the surroundings. And although it is well ventilated by the material, but they break and shuts all the winds. So we made openings so that the wind can go through it in some directions. And it turned out to be like this. In the entrance, we've used uh, stainless mesh metal curtains. This is from the street. And uh, you can open up the living room to the street in the daytime to get some wind without thinking of people looking you from the street. When you, when you can see behind from this, uh, this side, uh, you can't see from the other side. It's just like a lace curtain.
this place actually turned out to be in a various site. It depends where you are and where you, uh, where you are and when you are and who you are with, uh, something like that, uh, re-readable everywhere. Uh, so the wall won't restrict sites. Uh, neighbor being like a house, uh, garden being like a house, garden maybe as a street, and so on. A boundary that can be reread according to the situation of the surroundings and what comes up together. You can see it's very narrow. The streets are very narrow. Well, you know, this was the before we touched, uh, before construction. It was uh, dead space. But there are plants growing, growing now, ventilation and uh, Taking in the sunlight is working pretty good. The next one. Uh, this is in the same site as the, the wall I showed. And uh, it's at the back of the house. This is the model. Uh, this small room is a corridor-like one-story room that connects the original house and the house built later on at the back. Uh, it's the, uh, the one with the colored place. It's a small room. Uh, the room is faced to the small courtyard, but again, wind and humidity has no escape due to the lay layout of the houses, resulted deterioration and Pierce the wall and floors. They wanted to fix that, of course, and they want this room to energize the activity of the two families and, that, and create a well-ventilated garden and house. So we decided to leave the roof as it is, since it hasn't been aged. Underneath that, we planned a hollow structure with 1.6 millimeter thick steel sheet to create room for the wind and to support the roof with the unit or barely a man can uh, get in. It's a very small unit. Uh, in order to circulate the air all the time, ground level and the ceiling level has hole through the structure. This is the model. You can see the uh, the triangle hole and the, uh, at the top there's a hole too. And we put um, fixed glasses, uh, the, blue, the blue place, and the sliding doors at the, uh, that will uh, function as like a switch. Like this. Uh, it slides like this. And even when you are closing the room, it, this is actually closing the room, and the wind can go through the hollow structure above and below. It looks massive from the, uh, the other side. So we therefore plan to use various fittings that do not stop the wind circulation. Uh, the usual house, housing uh, wall thickness of the wall is about like 100 millimeter thick. So it shuts out the sound and makes the small room more smaller. Uh, but this structure is 1.6 millimeters. Uh, this thin steel sheet structure, which is making room for the wind, maybe can create where internal and external sound vibrates and purvey like never happened before. Uh, it will take in 
the outside sound and let the internal sound expand to outside. So it should feel uh, a lot bigger than it is. Uh, this project is a conversion of an apartment to a single housing. The building was a, has a two-story RC structure. And the parking space on the south side, which a client wants to make it into a garden in this project. Uh, they first requested us to change the entire aluminum sashes to steel sashes because the clients just like the steel sashes. And also a complete new relation with the garden and building. Usually the sashes are placed in the opening uh, section to close the building, even though the logic to open the opening is to free the building. Uh, we are maybe ignoring the logic all the time, which you made by yourself. You know, you open, but you close. Uh, I, I don't get that. But in this project, uh, the existing opening will not be closed with usual sashes, curtains, or glass doors, uh, but will be slightly uh, displaced towards the garden from where they had been so that the only holes are present when they are opened. So we planned a window between the garden side and the building side, not to for the opening. The height of the horizontal line that divides the upper and lower door at the center is uh, usable for the handrail for the upper floor. Um, by the way, the window goes all the way up above to the roof to maintenance uh, the curtains and hanging door wheels. Uh, that will also help the usage of the roof as a place. This is the model, section model. You can see the handrail uh, or the, 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 the division of the uh, glass doors in the uh, second floor. And the living plan became like this, very simple. The main functions are placed in the north side and free to the garden side. Uh, I think this method will relatively change the connection to the outside. Uh, figure above shows the number of windows you open to connect to outside. Uh, below, it is the percentage of how much you open the building to relate to outside. Uh, this method will gently brings the environment together and very more phenomenal, uh, building to more phenomenal thing. Uh, this will make the building no longer just a closed box, but to be the state of the whole place, including the outside garden. Uh, this is the ground and upper floor. Uh, it's getting more detailed at the construction site now since we couldn't research everything before we start constructing. This is the uh, photo now. Uh, it's, it, we're constructing now. It will be completed in the uh, late summer and uh, we have to finish the interior from now. So in this project, we designed a window that is maybe too big for people, but found a new relation between the building and outside. But at the same time, we separated the doors at the upper floor handrail level and divided the glass into very humanized scale, which was to make the glass thinner and make the door lighter so people can slide them easily. Uh, stepping back from human and humanizing uh, put together in one design is what we call scripting, uh, and that's needed. Uh, 
And I will la uh, last share this project. Uh, this is an old project, but I think this shows the way of our thinking very simple. Uh, this is a site in uh, Hokkaido, all the way up in the north of Japan. Looking, looking over the ocean on the cliff, there's a site with spreading horizon and short bamboo all around. Uh, actually, trees can't grow because the wind, is, wind here is too strong. Uh, the north wind from the sea and the collision from the warm and cold current generates a sea fog during the uh, summer at the most. Because of that, uh, the daylight hours are so few, the average temperature is low, and it has a climate like the high mountains, even though the site is zero meter above sea. And the uh, client's request was to make this place, uh, make this huge place as a park so that people can come in. Uh, but the budgets are super low for this size of a site. So we plan to make something very small to influence this whole place. We plan just two walls that uh, snuggled up in the uh, wind beaten, shadowless field. Uh, trees and plants grow, uh, flowers bloom, butterflies stop over. We imagine something like that. Uh, sky, horizon, grass, and uh, small forest which will be growing in between the walls mixed together. The base of the wall is uh, parabolic curved, uh, getting straighter as you get to the top. so as to gently take, uh, take the wind to handle. But on the other hand, the wall takes the wind load and fall down. So they, so they, the two walls, support each other to exist in this place. The wall is made from a uh, nine millimeter thick uh, single steel plate. Uh, we plan to use heating and cooling to bend the plate accurate. The pre-rusted steel is used to coexist and uh, harmonize with uh, nature where wind is dominant in this place surrounded by the sea. The small bends and the openings uh, works as a stabilizer because the horizontal lift force is uh, going to occur and tries to open, the, open up the two walls and collapse. So uh, they're breaking and slowing down the wind. The wall gener generates faster stream outside and a gentle air stream in the between and uh, eventually disappears as it gets to the center. And that allows the trees to grow here, uh, which had never happened before. And not only the short bamboo grasses, other that was hiding in the shadows will start to grow. And the gulls and butterflies that could not inhabit here. And that may be a nice place uh, sometimes for people, rather than non-shadow, huge land. Uh, it was quite scary at the first visit when you see something too big for a land. So I think it'll be more easier for people to come here now. So uh, Direct la relation we script in between architecture and people can be or should maybe something really small. Uh, we think that uh, in, this t in this case, it, it, uh, we had to make, uh, we should make just a uh, shadow and uh, the, the bending that looks like an opening. Uh, we think that uh, taking that kind of balance and adding into the, the, the whole script 
how humans and other factors come together will lead to what we call richness. It's the end. Thank you. ถึงโอกาสต่อไปก็คือเป็นช่วงนะฮะในการสัมภาษณ์ในการคงไม่ใช่สัมภาษณ์ในการตอบคําถามหรือว่าใครมีคําถามหรืออะไรต่างๆนะครับผมรู้สึกว่าสถาปนิกทั้งสองท่านนะให้มุมมองหรืออะไรต่างๆกับเรามากมายนะและผมเชื่อว่าในใจของน้องๆทุกคนของเพื่อนๆพี่ๆน้องๆคงมีคําถามอยู่แน่นอนนะครับเพราะฉะนั้นเนี่ยคือผมเชื่อว่านะครับสถาปนิกรางวัล AR Award นะฮะเพิ่ง30ต้นๆน,นะอยากที่จะคุยอะไรอยู่ตรงนี้แล้วแล้วก็อยากให้ใครที่มีคำถามยกมือขึ้นเลยนะฮะแล้วเดี๋ยวผมถือไม้แล้วก็เดินไปหาง่ายๆกันเลยฮะถามเป็นภาษาไทยก็ได้ภาษาอังกฤษก็ได้ใครพูดญี่ปุ่นได้ก็พูดญี่ปุ่นก็ได้ฮะแต่ผมเชื่อว่าไม่น่ามีนะฮะโอเคฮะก็เดี๋ยวเราเริ่มกันเลยแล้วกันนะครับก็ใครมีคาถามอะไรยังไงไหมฮะเปิดก่อนเลยฮะเปิดก่อนได้เปรียบนะฮะอยู่ยากไหมที่ญี่ปุ่นคิดงานแบบนี้เอาไหมฮะอยู่ยากไหมนะมีไหมฮะใครอยากถามผมเลยรู้สึกว่าอยากให้ไม่ไม,ไม่ไม่มีเลยฮะอาจจะยังเขินอยู่ฮะงั้นผมรบกวนพี่อันเปิดข้อแรกเลยแล้วกันนะพี่โอเคครับพี่เอ่อ um, maybe a few thank you for both to both of you uh, very inspiring uh, work I... I'd like for you to give them some more applause, please. p e n g a n h e l I think what's beautiful about your work is uh, how it works in the abstract way, and I think um, it's something that students in Thailand can learn a lot from. And another element is is how there's also a social, a human element. In, in in your work, how important is that in in designing in in responding to life in general to both of you? ถ้าอยากจะแปลก็ได้นะครับก็สุขุยอันนี้ inspiration นี่นั่นเองแต่เดี๋ยวมองกักเซ่คนจีนกักเซ่ตุกับคนจีนไทยนกับคนจีนกันนี่ตัวเตะเดี๋ยวถ้าแต่อันนี้สุขุยจูชูคาโอกุเกนกันสุดก็ต่อのと建築を社会に対してな何かを答えを求めるようなっていうことをどうまあもうちょっと一般化してあの建築あの今の学生とか建築家に説明していただければいただければ幸いかと二人とも。Well, I think uh, maybe you know. Usually, people don't think about architecture when you're living. You, we don't think about using this building with a, in a dia,、uh, like with a diagram. No, you just、uh, you you're just using this and you're just feeling this place, and、uh, we're together in this place, like. In a, like a lecture like this, you know,、uh, the building is not really important. The logic is not really important、uh, at the last, you know. So I think you have to think more.、Uh, why、uh, we think ab abstract is to just think no normally, you know, <laughs> just think something. What what is What is good and what what is fun and stuff like that. So and after that, you have to make how, then how you can make that fun and how you can make that. That's the logic you need. So the first thing you need is very abstract, and to make abstract to the real、uh, world, you need logic. 
あの抽象化の問題は僕は大切なことだと思っておりまして何かこう具体的なもの具体的なものって世の中にはすごく具体的で複雑なことが起こっているんですけれどもそれをそのまま扱ってしまうとこう対立してしまうでそれをある程度こう抽象化する必要があるただ抽象化しすぎるとこうユニバーサルスペースのように真っ白になって結局何も扱って数や数とかあの無に帰してしまう何もないだから僕は中あの抽象化というのはまずあのユニバーサルスペースとかではない抽象化のあり方を考えています。ま、ずっとあのあให้ให้มันกลายเป็นเป็นสิ่งที่จับต้องได้เนี่ยถ้าถ้าถ้ามองมองกับกันก็คือว่าไอ้สิ่งที่มันจับต้องได้หรือหรือว่าสิ่งสิ่งที่ที่มันเป็นอยู่เนี่ยสิ่งสิ่งสิ่งที่เห็นอยู่เนี่ยบางทีถ้ามองมองมองกับกันก็คือมันมันดูน่าเบื่อความความจริงมันกายภาพรูปธรรมรูปธรรมรูปธรรมถ้าถ้ามองรูปธรรมมากมากบางทีมันกลับกลายเป็นสิ่งที่ไม่ใช่เป็นสิ่งที่น่าเบื่อในมองในในในถ้าถ้างั้นถ้ามุมมุมมองกลับมาที่ในเชิง abstract เนี่ยแอปแอปแสกน่าน่าจะสร้างโอกาสน่าจะสร้างอะไรได้มากกว่าแต่ถ้าถ้าถ้าแอปแสกเกินไปมันก็จะกลายเป็นสีขาวเดี๋ยวมันจะขายกลายเป็นขาวไปเลยดังนั้นดังนั้นก็ต้องก็ต้องก็ต้องก็ต้องก็ต้องกลับกลับกลับกลับมาในสู่สะท้อนกลับมาในสู่โลกโลกโลกแห่งความเป็นจริงด้วยเหมือนกันเดี๋ยวผมว่าอีมาอันโอ大学の博士課程にいてあの研究テーマとして多義多義化する建築から見た実像と虚像の関係性っていうことを扱っています実像と虚像アクチャリアリティアンドバーチャリアリティ。I'm I'm doctor student.、Uh, my my research theme is、uh, relationship between actual reality and virtual reality from polysemic 